Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to prepare to pass your Salesforce Administrator exam effectively. Using this method, I passed my admin exam on my very first attempt only seven weeks after seeing my very first Salesforce org. Hello and welcome back. This is the first video in the how to prepare, study and pass your Salesforce Certified Administrator exam series and we're going to be focusing on the first step, preparing for the exam. This is a really important part in passing your exam and you need to plan to make sure you give yourself the best possible chance of passing your exam the first time. So it took me just over seven weeks to pass my admin exam and that was from the first time that I saw a Salesforce org. So if I open my profile on tra Trailhead and I just go to the prepare for your Salesforce administrator credential, you'll see that I first completed my first module on the 31st of March 2020. Now, if I head to my Web Assessor account, you can see that I actually passed my exam on the 21st of May. So that is just seven weeks over. Now, you might be wondering why this shows as the 13th of April. Um, and the reason that this was done later, just again for full disclosure, was because, well, I didn't really know anything about Salesforce. So I didn't know if it was, you know, the area that I wanted to go into, you know, the industry. Um, and once I actually saw what I could do here with the platform basics and I got a bit more of an idea of it, that was when I made the decision that Salesforce was definitely what I wanted to do. So I was able to pass my admin exam just over seven weeks because of a couple of key steps I took when I was preparing for it. So one is actually breaking the exam guide down so I knew what I needed to know. The second was actually collating the best resources to learn from. So we're gonna cover those points in detail. So grab a drink get comfortable and let's get started. So the first point I want to cover is the exam guide and specifically how we break that exam guide down to give us a blueprint, a, a working syllabus that we need to work towards and work through to ensure that we're prepared best to pass the exam. So what we're gonna do now is just head across the trailhead and we're just gonna to head to the exam guide for the admin exam. And just to walk you through this, you can read through this at your own leisure, but a couple of key points I want to bring out is if we have a look at the about the exam section here, it tells us how many questions there are, it tells us the length of time we have to pass the exam or to sit the exam, I should say. And then it also gives us our passing score and then a couple of other bits and, and bobs there. What we also have here are the recommended training and references. And this is something that I would make sure that you really have a look at and you really work your way through. For example, this trail max is going to be your number one go to. You've got an extra trail here. You've got this practice test, which is going to be really useful. And you've also got super badges, which again, the super badges are fantastic um, to really solidify your understanding and your knowledge. So again, these are some really key points you want to look at. You also have some sponsored training here. So this will be training that Salesforce provide themselves. So you've got that if you want to go down that route. And then more importantly, we have this exam outline. And this is where I really want to focus on for a couple of minutes. So why do I want to focus on the exam outline? Well, within these sections here, which will open up, you have got objectives. And each of these objectives give you something clear that you need to know or that you need to understand. So as you can imagine, if you work your way through these and you spend time reading them and learning them and actually understanding what it's asking it for, you're actually going to get a blueprint of what you need to know. And the way that I used this to kind of structure my study was I, and I'll show you the spreadsheet here, is I built a spreadsheet and I had each objective and then each section here. And then all I did was copy the objective and then I'd pick out keywords. So, you know, describe the information found in the company settings, for example, company settings, fiscal year, business hours, currency management, default settings. I knew it was company settings that I was looking at. And again, as you go through these, you can look at given a scenario, identify the capabilities and implications of the sales process. And then we say sales process, opportunity, path, forecast impact. So I knew I needed to know about the opportunity sales stages, the forecasting, quotes, opportunity splits, orders and contracts, because they're all part of that process as well. So this really helped me when I was studying and I was really kind of getting into it. And as you probably saw from the overview, I also created this little spreadsheet here, this little summary. And all I did was put the number of questions I was going to be asked, the pass rate, 
and then I used the formula to work out what the, well how many questions I needed to get right to pass. Then again, I also did the exact same for here, and I just used a bit of you know validation rule. Well, sorry, not validation rules, the Salesforce, but I used a bit of uh, you know data validation and and G sheets to actually set this. And you know if there's enough interest in this spreadsheet, what I'll do is I'll put it together in a video, walk you through it, and do that for you. So again, you know if you want to see more about this spreadsheet, let me know, and I will do that. But anyway, back to the trailhead bit here. So. As you'll see, this gives us everything that we need to know. Now, once we know everything that we need to know, we then need to go and get the resources to help us actually study it. So we need to go and collect all that information that we can then refer to to learn. And this is what we're going to do next is just walk through the best resources. Before we dive into resources, I want to talk about learning preferences first. It's important that you use material that matches how you learn, otherwise you're not studying effectively and you're wasting your time. It's generally accepted that there are three main types of learning styles. You have visual, auditory and kinesthetic, although recently there are people who are calling for reading to be a style in its own. So let's talk through these styles. Well first, we have visual. So visual just means you learn better when you watch YouTube videos or you watch someone carry out the task. Auditory means you learn better when you listen to perhaps lectures about it or you listen to audiobooks or podcasts. Third, there's kinesthetic, which means you learn better through actually being hands-on and doing what it is that you're trying to learn. And then fourth, we have reading, which is well, learning by reading. So when you read documentation or you read step-by-step -step guide or even articles, that's how you learn best. Now, you might already know your preferred learning style, but if not, there's loads of tests online that you can use to, to, to determine your preferred learning style, which I would recommend doing so. Doing this will give you an idea of how you learn best, and then you can tailor your material to match it. So most people will have a primary learning style and then a secondary one. Now I've always classed myself as a visual learner as I learn a lot through reading documentation and articles. However, with the new emerging reading style, I think that's gonna be more realistic for me. I also learn through hands-on experience. So actually doing the work step by step. That's why Trailhead is so useful to me is I can read about the concepts, get an understanding of them. Then I can actually go through the steps of configuring and creating them in Salesforce. It works really well for me. So once you know your learning style, configure your study to match your learning style. Now the only caveat I would say to this is that I would say you 100% need hands-on experience with Salesforce to pass your exam and become a good Salesforce admin or consultant. There are very few people who can study purely from watching Udemy videos, listening to podcasts or reading documentation and even if they did pass would they actually be any good and any use? We have a saying here in the UK, which is all the gear, no idea. And it refers to when someone has all the best equipment, but has no idea what they're doing. So think of someone who's decided to take up golf. Rather than spending time taking lessons or spending a few hours at the driving range or with friends learning how to play, they just go and spend thousands of pounds on the best clubs, the best bag, the best golf clothes, and then they turn up for a round with the mates. Now, when they turn up, they'll look really impressive. But as soon as they get on the tee and take their first swing, it becomes apparent that they don't know what they're doing. Don't be that guy. Make sure you get, on a, you get as much hands-on experience as possible so when you do land your first job, you can bring some real value to the company who's employed you and you can actually perform your duties. Also, I would say that hands-on experience is the number one way of not only learning but solidifying your knowledge to make sure that you don't forget it and you can recall it when you need it the most in the exam. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what you came here for. The top five resources for passing your admin exam, starting with number five. So number five is a study buddy or study group. When I started out in Salesforce, I didn't know any programs or groups I could join in to help with my studying. But I did have a friend in the US who was looking at getting his admin cert too. So we worked together, we kept each other accountable and encouraged each other. This meant that I had someone there who I could check in with every couple of days and who would ask where I was up to, what I was studying, and more importantly, why I hadn't studied what I said I would, 
and that made a huge difference. It meant that I didn't feel like I was going it on my own and there was the added bonus of being able to check my knowledge with him and also to check concepts with each other and we used to test and ask each other questions as well just to really you know figure out how effective our studies were going. Number four, Salesforce help pages and the community. If you're looking for a single source of truth about any given Salesforce feature or concept, then the Salesforce help pages are where you want to go. There's a really cool feature in Salesforce itself where if you're on you know, whatever page you need to look at, whatever it is you're configuring, you'll see a little button here called help for this page. When you click on that, that's gonna open up the, help, the Salesforce help pages with exactly what you need to go. Now, another really useful resource that you can use is the Salesforce help groups or the Salesforce groups, if you will. So, you know, within Salesforce itself and within Trailhead, if you just go to community here, what you'll see is you have a list of groups and you just click on groups there. That'll then open up this page and then you can search for the groups you want. You can see the featured groups. And what you'll find is anytime you need help, this is a great place to go, you know, don't be afraid to ask anything. There's no stupid question. And one of the big, big things about Salesforce is it's Ohana, it's community, it's family, if you will. And it's known for, well, being collaborative and being friendly. So for example, when I first started out, I managed to speak to a CTA in Germany who spent hours just helping me on my journey, just guiding me through what I needed to learn and, and all that kind of stuff, really. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask a question. Someone will be there to help and someone will answer. Number three, Udemy. Udemy is perhaps one of the most popular ways to learn Salesforce. There's a number of courses here that can help you and it can be a great resource, but just be careful because you can easily enter autopilot while you're watching videos and you're not actually learning. You're just in Netflix mode and not really paying too much attention. Now, a big reason for this is the tutor. Each tutor has their own way of presenting and you need to find one that works for you. Some are quite slow paced, some are really fast paced and then some just talk purely through slides while some walk you through the configuration. But also watch out for those who teach in the old classic interface rather than the new lightning interface because classics rather outdated now and very few companies tend to use it. But all in all, Udemy is a really good resource to look at. Number two, focus on force. Focus on force is honestly one of my favorite resources not only does it have high quality presentation slides which give you a deep understanding of the concepts, but it also has fantastic practice exams. And I really want to emphasize the practice exams as they can be a really incredibly powerful learning tool if you approach them in the right way. So there's two ways which you can use the exams. You can either answer all of the questions immediately and, and then you get the answers at the end. So it gives you that kind of, well, real life scenario, real life feeling of taking the exam or what you can do is get feedback after every question. So the feedback tells you the right answer, which is useful, but the most useful part is it gives you a detailed reason as to why that is the right answer and perhaps why the answer you picked is incorrect. So this gives you a solid understanding of each concept and it was pivotal in my learning process. And you know what I would suggest is as you're learning and as you're going through each section, take the sectional um, quiz or sectional test from Focus on Force do it where you see the answer after every question, and then that'll just help deepen your learning and your understanding of, of what you're well, meant to know. And yeah, focus on forces number two for me. Number one, Trailhead. I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anyone, but the number one resource is Trailhead. It's Salesforce's own training platform, and as such, it has every piece of information that you'll need. But most importantly, it's the number one place where you can get hands-on experience. There's hundreds of trails and modules that you can work through, and there's one dedicated for the Salesforce admin credential. This is where you will practice what you're learning. You can spin up as many free playgrounds as you want, and playgrounds are just sample orgs, almost dev orgs that you could play around in, so they're risk-free. You can spin up as many of these as you want, and they're completely free as well, so you can really practice and get to grips with everything. Trailhead should be your starting point when you study. Even now, I use Trailhead when studying for new certifications, and I know pretty much every single Salesforce professional use Trailhead to keep up to date and keep their knowledge and skills well, 
tuned up. Well, that's it. I hope this video has been useful. Uh, if it has, don't forget to like and subscribe. It tells YouTube that you found it useful. So it's going to show it to other people who are looking for the same kind of information. And don't forget to head to my website where you can get a free guide on how to pass your admin exam. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and see you soon.